On this day, we look to the cross of Christ on Calvary. Here we are made aware of all that Christ Jesus has done for us. It was on this cross that an innocent Jesus took upon himself the punishment we deserved. We look to the cross and are ashamed of our sins. It was on this cross that Christ spoke the words, Father, forgive them. It was what happened on this cross that made the ground shake, the graves open, the skies darken, and the temple curtain rip. We look to the cross and know that God's power is at work against sin, death, and the devil. It was on this cross that Christ proclaimed, It is finished. forsaken by the betrayer. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught at the voice of the enemy. They bring down suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could endure it, but it is you. My companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship. But I call to God. And the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress. And he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. The reading of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Jesus speaks a truth concerning the one who would betray him. Then, one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord! Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi? Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives.
Let us pray. Lord, you who were forsaken by one of your own disciples, who betrayed you into the hands of sinful men, we know that by our sin we betray you every day. Send your Spirit to help us fight the temptation to betray you so that we would not forsake you. forsaken by his disciples. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors. I am a threat to my friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten by them as though I were dead. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Jesus predicts Peter's denial, prays at Gethsemane, and is arrested. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Peter, Jesus answered, This very night, before the rooster crows, 
you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Let us pray. Lord, your own disciples deserted you and fled. They left you all alone. When we are tempted to desert you, send us your Spirit-given gift of faith that we would stay close to you and not run away when life gets hard.
forsaken by his own people. Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. How long, O people, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and see false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their dreaming and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. The chief priests bring false accusations against Christ. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us. If you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He's worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you? Let us pray. Lord, your own people declared you guilty of blasphemy and sought your death. When we are tempted to take your name in vain, send us your Spirit, that we may resist temptation and always hold fast to you. Your only son,
forsaken by Peter. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. O oh, my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death. O oh Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O oh my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink. O oh, my people. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could I have done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God? O my people. In the face of seemingly relentless interrogation, Peter vehemently denies knowing Christ. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Let us pray. Lord, even your own faithful disciple Peter denied knowing you. When we deny you by our sinful actions, restore us in your forgiving love and never forsake us who so often forsake you.
forsaken by Pilate. Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. By the word of your lips, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. My steps have held to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call on you, O God, for you will answer me. Show the wonder of your great love. You who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wing. From the wicked who assail me. Jesus is subjected to the injustice of the governing authorities. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one? Do you want me to release to you Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Let us pray. Lord, even the secular power of this world recognized your innocence, but sent you to death anyway. Help us to always hold fast to you, Lord, even in the face of pressure from within and without, that we would not turn our backs on you.
forsaken at the cross. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. He was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Soldiers repeatedly shame and abuse Jesus. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him Hail, hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus the king of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You, who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, on the cross you were taunted by those who crucified you, by those who stood by and watched, and by those crucified with you. The world still taunts you and forsakes you. By your Spirit, let me look on your cross and find strength to witness boldly in your name.
forsaken by God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I'm worn out, calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail, looking for my God. You know my folly, O God. My guilt is not hidden from you. May those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me, O Lord, the Lord Almighty. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even the death of the cross. The infinite Christ confronts finite death. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Hey, Lord! Hey, Lord! Lama Sabachthani! Which means, My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, who has not spared your only Son, but delivered him up for us all, that he might bear our sins upon the cross, grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the same, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.